All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, before we get into the video, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. This video right here is Street Preaching at Wild Gay Pride Festival, episode two. So yeah, man, without further ado, man, let's get right into it. Enough talking, I will give all my thoughts at the end of the video. Let's get it, let's go. <laughs> So any Christian minister who's picking and choosing from the Bible, even like a booth that's set up in there, that's a Christian minister, but gay as well. It, it doesn't it's contradictory to say, I believe in God. I believe that the Bible is inspired by him and then pick and choose what you want out of the Bible. You're, you're not a true Christian. You're not a true follower of Christ. If you can just throw your opinions in. I have one question. Are you God? No, I'm not. I'm a child okay, of God. So so it's your right to judge other people, which is exactly what you're doing. When, when, what am I doing that's judging someone? You're saying that people are going to go to hell or that they're not Christian. You are saying that God does not judge people. So you're judging. You're judging everybody here. What gives you that right? Who so, do you think you are? Yes. Just tell me, who are you? Who did I tell that you're doomed, condemned, and you're going to hell 100%? Who, who did I tell that to? I'm just saying, you're saying that, these, that everybody here, that homosexuality is a sin. Yeah, so, saying, so just... Are you saying homosexuality is a sin? No, God's saying it. So listen, me me saying homosexuality is a sin, is, is it's not judging. So hold on, hold on, hold on. A judge, a judge, what a judge does is they determine the sentence. A judge is someone who says, boom, guilty or boom, innocent. And if they're guilty, you got this many years in jail or whatever they're going to give them. That's a judgment that's bringing forth. So me, a police officer saying, hey, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour. That's not bringing a judgment. That's just saying what the law is. So I'm not bringing judgment. I haven't told anyone, hey, you're doomed and you're going to hell. I'm telling them that there's hope that sin does lead to death. I am revealing what the law says. Sin does lead to death, but God can save each and every person. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die and to be raised from the dead. I will pray very hard for you tonight for your narrow-mindedness to be widened. What's, what's narrow-minded? What's narrow-minded? God is the one who said that, not not me. I'm just quoting what he what he has inspired. I'm not the one. I'm saying what God has told me. What God has told me to love everyone, to love everyone, and to not judge everyone that is in this place tonight. Okay, so so if you see a blind person walking towards the edge of a cliff and you don't tell them hey listen the way that you're going is leading you you're gonna die if you keep going if you stay quiet and say oh no i don't want to offend them i don't want him to think that i'm looking at his weakness and being blind and i'm, I'm just gonna stay quiet i'm gonna stay quiet and let him walk up a cliff so if i from a christian standpoint if i know that god is real and if i know the way that god is going to judge people because he's given us the law he wrote it with his finger so if he's given us that and I see someone walking that way towards destruction, then it's really hateful and selfish of me to watch them walk straight off, just like a blind person walking off a cliff. It's it's really hateful of me to just let someone continue in a path that's leading them to death and destruction, not based off my opinion, but based off what God says. So me bringing a warning along with a mistake when she made my child pregnant. God didn't make God. Wait, what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what he said. God did not make a mistake. With a mistake when she made when she made my child. What did that say? Trans. Oh my gosh. Oh. What? Okay, I'm gonna give my thoughts at the end. That is sick. That is sick. My child. Trans. God didn't make. God gave us free will. He didn't make your child trans. Not trying to make the person God gave us free will. So, yeah. so I'm not judging you. No, I'm not, I'm not judging you either. I am going to pray for you. I am going to pray hard for you tonight. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian pastor. I am a Christian minister. I am a Christian past
He did. He did inspire it in the scriptures. Yeah. So where is it? No. Tell me. No. Quote it to me. I'm gonna quote it to you. You're gonna read it to me. You don't yeah. even know. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. It's right here in the Bible, bro. It is the Bible. It is the Bible. It says they want to inherit the kingdom of God. So you asked me where it was. She asked me to read it. She asked me. It's not in the Bible. It is not in the Bible. Here, are you, you no, show it is not in the Bible at all. You do not know Hebrew, so you don't know that. So shut the up. Quit reading King James Version that is predicted by a white man who's a white Christian who has hate. So shut up about reading the Bible. That is not true. The Bible Put specifically. Hey, hey, check on the speaker again. So the Bible says. You're speaking for everyone. Some people don't hear it. I love you. I love you. I love you, I love you too. I love you too. I'm not talking trash. I'm not talking trash. Okay. So I, I have been loving and nice and kind, and and you guys are saying love is love, are screaming at me, telling me to leave, cussing at me, all this stuff. Are you gay? No, I'm not gay. Because God loves you, and He wants the message of salvation to come to you. That's not loving. So now what I'm getting here, what I'm getting is that it's love that God loves all of us, that you love all of us, and that you want us to love everyone as God loves us. That's correct, right? Yes. And forgive me for my ignorance, because I have not read the Bible. I do not practice Christianity, but the homosexuality in itself is rooted in love, is it not? It's about loving someone else who is of the same gender as you. That's love right there, right? It depends on what you call love. So if you take different people's opinions of love, you could try to say that it is love. But if you take God's definition of love, who God is love, and the way that He created us and His plan and His purpose for our life, then it reveals that it's actually not love based on what God says, not just what the creation says. And then it's it actually falls under the category, a woman came up and said it earlier, it falls under the category of lust, which can be a sin and it's a fleshly... She said the difference between lust and love. Between lust and love, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what God revealed to her. But I'm saying that lust, it is lust. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This is love for ourselves and love for our people. No. So, so what is God's second? I can read it to you. Sure. He just asked me a question. He does want to. He does want to hear it because he asked me. That's really loving. That's really loving. Look, he wants to know. He just said, I want to know. He wants to understand. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, which means easily angered, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So that's that's a biblical definition of, of what love is. So none of that, in my mind, contradicts the idea of homosexuality being a form of love, right? Nothing in that. Nothing is contradictory in my mind to the idea of homosexuality being love. Well, I didn't see where it said you shouldn't murder or you shouldn't steal no, 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 or you no. shouldn't punch someone no, no, in the no. face. That's, so that wasn't that definition, but that, that definition is not sum up sum up the Bible. Bro, come on man. Where's Brandon at? Hey Brandon! Yeah, yeah, he's telling him. This dude right here. 
What? Did I say that? No, I didn't say that just now. Okay, but you know what assault is? Yeah. Plug in your microphone, it's not assault. It's not vandalism either, because is it destroyed? It's something. What is it then? Ask the police officer. You know, you're trying to... Ask the police officer. You're trying to put a charge on someone for unplugging your microphone. I didn't, I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. You were no, trying to get... You're, you're Wait, what just happened? The... Camera operator reporting damage to our equipment to police, and we are right next to it. And they plug in your microphone. It's not assault. It's not vandalism either. Because is it destroyed? It's something. What is it then? Ask the police officer. You know, you're trying to ask the police officer. You're trying to put a charge on someone for unplugging your microphone. I didn't. I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. You're no, trying to get you're, you're pointing to the cops to get him in trouble. What's the yeah, charge? Yeah, my buddies. What's the charge? You tell me. I don't want your microphone in my face. Okay. So let me ask you. Hold the microphone. What is no? Well, if you put your microphone in my face, I'm gonna take it out of my face. Go ask the police officer. No, 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 I don't, you, I don't know what. No, you try, I don't no, know what crime no, no, it is to, committed. You try to say that that's uh, a crime. Unplugging your stupid microphone. Yeah, what's it the crime? Is. I guarantee what's, the police no, 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 officer. You're a smart guy. Me. What's the crime? You tell me. I don't know. What the you crime said is. it's a crime. It is what a crime. Is, what's the crime? I don't know the law. You're a moron. You, you tell me you're, what it is. You are the perfect example of a Christian. You're the perfect this is example. Love. This is so Ladies loving. and gentlemen, this is the perfect example of a Christian who pulls out of their ass when they don't know what the f they're talking about. So loving, man. Love is love. We're all about love, right? That was real loving. Have you have you heard me respond to anyone in a derogatory, negative way that puts someone down in, in that, other than speaking about what the Bible says? What you read is really compared to is that that description of how God loves us it doesn't say anything about murder or about people. That is not a fair comparison because that nothing, nothing about that is correlated or defined in any way any way by love as homosexuality is. So that's not a fair comparison for you to make. What do you have? Well, it's a comparison in the sense that the Bible calls it sin and calls all those other things sin. So it's kind of like an umbrella of sin. So in that way, it is a, a fair comparison to do it. But there are many places in the Bible. If I'm a true Christian and I truly follow Jesus, then I have to take God's word for what it is and even take the, the fact that historically it's the most proven historical book that, that exists from so many different people, so many different pot, uh, compilings that are brought together of people throughout history. It's the most proven history book. So for me to even look in the scriptures and then see it take place in my own life, like see God's supernatural hand heal people and cast demons out of people and raise people from the dead and things like that and see him completely transform my life just like the Bible says and see him heal my heart just like the Bible says, then I do know that it's true. So for me to try to pick and choose from the Bible would be hypocritical of me and putting my opinion over what I believe God has inspired in the scriptures. And in that sense, the Bible does talk about homosexuality being wrong and things like that. So that's where I can tie in the umbrella of sin. And that verse gives us a, a definition of love, but that doesn't sum up everything in the Bible. Um, you are also displaying your body. I'm sorry. I had to pause right here. Uh, I'm going to let a couple minutes play out, but I had to pause right here because I just feel like it's just so, to me, it's, it's so hard to try to focus when you have someone who is super grown of an age, I mean, dude look like he's about 50, 60 years old, acting like a 10-year-old, going around in circles with a cape on and, and with some rainbow shorts on. And and <laughs> I'm sorry, bro, but shout out to Nicholas, man. Shout out to Nicholas for really going through everything he's going through right now and being able to still preach the word of God, even through all the nonsense, and especially the big kid in the background who's acting like a two-year-old when my little sister's seven and she won't even act like this. I'm going to get my, I'm going to give the rest of my thoughts, but I'm going to let a couple minutes play out. Uh, and yeah, man, I can't, <laughs> I truly can't wait to talk about, I can't wait to talk about everything that's going on right now in this video. See, because I heard you earlier say that someone who they are is not equivalent to what their actions are. And when people were shouting at you just now, you were saying, wow, that's so loving. Love is love, guys, which uh, is equivocating. Love's an action. Is, no. Excuse me, I got some things to say about love. Like how I made love your mom last night. <laughs> so... When you say that, when you use someone's actions to justify your stance that love is not love and that homosexuality is a sin, that is negating what you previously said about someone's actions not being human. No, because love 
love is an action. It's something that we speak. Love is something that we, we actually do. What, it comes out of our heart, no, which even proceeds that? from God. So, so I'm, not, I'm not being hypocritical or saying the opposite by saying that's not loving. Like, like I just said, love is not rude. Love is not envious. Love is not this. Those are all things that a person either does or motives or intentions of the heart. So it lines up perfectly with what I said. Sure, but love comes from an aspect of who you are, right? Like, you didn't choose to be heterosexual when you were born or created, right? You just were born that way. Is that correct? No, I wasn't born. Either way, I was born with free will. And as I grew up and as I learned and as even temptations came, then I made a decision either to be gay, bi, heterosexual, anything that you want to say out there. I, I made the choice of, of what I, what kind of actions I was going to commit and what kind of things that I was going to do. Listen, just just because just because you have the urge or the thought doesn't mean that it's who you are. Listen, everyone is tempted in every way. I've had homosexual temptations. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause it right there, bro. Uh, fam, this this right here, this video is very, like, bro, it was hard to watch, okay? It was truly hard to watch because seeing people that are grown act like little kids, like, come on, fam. Like, y'all need to mature, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just because somebody doesn't agree with the lifestyle that, you, that you're living, just because somebody don't agree with what you may agree with, that don't mean that you have to vandalize what they're trying to do or trying to uh, play loud music over them and just be very rude and, and, and destructive, bro. It don't it like I don't see what's the point of that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all sitting around, going around in circles, jumping around, playing loud music, dancing, doing you have your you could do whatever you want to do. But the guy came up playing loud music from the beginning when he seen that this man was preaching the word of God. You see what I mean? But there's a lot of points that I need to mention in this video. First of all, he, they was talking about love before he walked over to the police. Now, love, love is definitely an action. And the Bible tells that love is not blasphemy. Love is not envy. Love is not all these different things. So love is an action. You know what I'm saying? And we all need to love one another. And if I love you, then I'm going to tell you the truth about the things that you're doing that can cause you to go down to hell. Now, I may not say you're going to hell, you're going, but I will tell you certain things or the sins that you're committing sin itself equals death so therefore if i love you i need to spread the gospel to you that's why my last video i said that everyone's purpose as a believer in christ is to spread the love of god is to spread the uh, good news of jesus christ that is everybody's purpose you know what I'm saying a lot of people disagree with that but if you think about it if there was if there was a man that that was that that was living any type of way they was living in sin they never heard the word of jesus christ so you see them living in habitual sin now a loving person will go over there and tell them like look man this is the truth jesus christ loves you he died on the cross for your sins the way that you're living can can destroy you it can destroy your soul it can destroy the spirit that is inside of you because after this life there's something else that we have to live for you know what I'm saying? But instead of me going over there preaching the good news to him, I just let him live how he want to live. Then finally, judgment day come. Now we're all being judged by God. And I see the same man that I should have told, the, or I should have uh, preached the gospel to, but instead I didn't. I allow him to live whatever way he want to live. So he see me and he see that I walk through the gates of heaven right? I walk through the gates of heaven. I turn my back and I see him right there. He looks at me and he's going to get sent to hell and he say, Jalen, why you didn't tell me? Why you didn't tell me? Why you didn't tell me that God was real? Why you didn't tell me about Jesus Christ? Why you didn't tell me? You spent two, three years working at the same job as me in the same department and you couldn't once tell me about the love that Jesus had for me. I was, I was touched. I was this, I was that. He's telling you all these different things, but he's going to get sent to hell because the seed that you could have planted, you didn't plant. So, a love is me preaching the word to you. So just because I may be against, or not I, the Bible is against every sin. The Bible is against the sins I struggle with. So if those sins are uh, me having pride in my heart, me eating a lot, gluttony, all these different laziness, all these different sins that I struggle with, the Bible is against that too. 
The Bible is against that too. He's not, the Bible is just not against LGBTQ. But this is what the Bible say about love too. This is Luke chapter six, verses 32. Uh, well, verse 32. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And this is verse 33. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And this is verse 34. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend money, uh, will lend to other sinners for a full return. You see, the, the LGBTQ, they love the people that are for them. They don't love people that that may have may may oppose to the lifestyle that they live. So if I go out there preaching the word of God, they will automatically think, "Oh, you're judging us. You how is me judging you telling you that all sin is going to lead to hell and that y'all need to repent? How is that me judging you? If anything, I love you more than anybody else who done walked past you and didn't tell you this thing. I love you more than them. Because if your parents are Christian and they're and, and, and you and they never told you about the word of God and all that, I love you more than your parents loved you because I'm telling you about the truth. I'm telling you about truth that that that's going to hurt because the truth is always going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And I say this so much. The Bible is is going to be offensive to those who continue to live in sin. I, uh, and uh, it was another, because I got to do a part two to this video. I'm going to do a part two because I really want to see how this video plays out. I, I have to do a part two to this video. Shout out to Nicholas. But earlier in the video, because I watched like a little, like maybe 11 minutes of this video. Uh, early in the video, a woman was talking about how she is a Christian and how she's not a Paulian and she's not this and she's not that. She only followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. First of all, when we look at the Bible, the Bible is a historical book. The Bible is to be is to be followed all throughout the Bible. You need to follow, like this is what we need to follow. The Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. Jesus Christ the, in the Gospels. Yes, I follow the teachings of Jesus. But the Bible, the, the Bible tells us that it's inspired. It is inspired. It is breathed on by God. So everything in this Bible, why am I only following certain teachings when I could be following what God says in the Old Testament also? Also, I should be following what God has placed other people in the Bible to tell the churches, such as Paul. You know what I'm saying? Such as Paul. You're talking about I'm not an Apollian. Paul had Paul wrote things in the Bible that was inspired by the Holy Spirit that was inside of him. Paul had the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. When he was speaking to these churches, he was telling us the same things that Jesus was telling us while he was on this earth. So it's not like Paul is contradicting what Jesus was saying. Paul is still telling us the truth. Before Paul even came along on the scene, the Old Testament talks about homosexuality. God! The, the Lord said the Old Testament talk about homosexuality in Leviticus also. And I know Leviticus say every other thing, too, and all these other things. That's why we need to read the Bible in context to know what in particular is the Bible speaking to the audience. And I'm not just saying, oh, if the if the Bible is only speaking to the Israelites, that this is all it is for. No, the Bible is for everyone. But we also need to understand the context of the Bible. Why was certain things said? Why did Jesus, I mean, why did the Bible tell us, tell us that we can't get tattoos? Why, what, what was, what was the reason behind this? So that's why we need to read it in context. Now it's another, uh, it's a couple more points that I want to mention in this video. Uh, she said, are you God? He's not God. I don't have to be God to tell you what the word of God says. If you pick up the Bible, it will tell you what the word of God said, it will tell you what God himself said. So I don't have to be God to tell you what, what, what God is trying to tell you. I like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to be God to do that. God called all believers to God said, go make disciples of all nations. God also said, go out and preach the gospel to all nations. So therefore I don't need to be God. Paul wasn't God. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, I don't have to be God to tell people uh, Jeremiah wasn't God. Like, come on now. I keep going on and on about all the prophets that God rolls up to tell the people to repent from their sins. They wasn't God themselves. The only person that walked this earth that was truly God in the flesh is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And then she, she said, you're judging others. 
And I already covered that. Like, I'm not judging. And I, I wrote down these little points as I was watching the video. But me judging you is not me telling the truth to you. That's not judging you. We need to tell. And, and, and I was saying, like, we need to tell people the truth. We need to. We need to stop holding back the truth from all people that's living in sin. And I ain't gonna lie. I am a victim of it. It's a lot of people I done seen wear crystals in person. Like, I done seen, I went to uh, Chipotle. This guy had a crystal on him. You know what I'm saying? Instead of asking him, like, hey, um, what, what, what does that necklace mean to you? Like, how, what, what is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to get to know him and everything like that, I just walk right past him. So I miss my, I, I don't, I want to say I miss my opportunity, but in a way I kind of miss my opportunity to spread the good news to him because who would have known if this, today, if, if that day was going to be his last day that he could have gave his life to Jesus Christ. But I was being so selfish that I didn't even get a chance to even spread the gospel to him. Cause I was too scared. I was too scared of what the response was going to be. So I'm a victim of it too, but we need to go out and preach the gospel to all people. Regardless of what they're in, they need to know truth. These, all these LGBT people are lost. They're lost. They're lost. You say that this is not a choice. It is a choice. You wasn't born this way. It is a choice. When you're born, you're not born straight. You're not born gay. You have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. You know what I'm saying? You have these choices to make, bro. And so when you come out the womb, and you and you in a world now you're in a world full of sin. Now you you've been born into sin. You've been born into sin. So now you have the choice to make. And the only the, the way that you go about making your choices is seriously looking at looking up to the sky, asking the Lord. You don't gotta look up to the sky. I don't know why I said that, but just ask God to help you, to help you overcome the struggles that you face. And I came out of the LGBT. So I know what I'm talking about. You got to ask him to help you come out of these struggles. You got to be willing to give it up. You got to humbly come to him with an open heart and ask him, Lord, I repent. I First of all, I, I repent, God. I repent for the sins that I have done, sins that I was living in, that I was comfortable in, that I didn't want to give up. Because these all these people, they're just too comfortable in their sin. That's why they're so against what he's saying. Because they're too comfortable in their sin. Come up out of your sin. Stop being comfortable in your sin. Live a life that is, is dedicated to the Lord. Live a life that is fully dedicated to the Lord. You cannot be comfortable in your sin and still want to live for Christ. I don't care how many churches you've been through. I don't care how many seminar classes you've been. I don't care what you study. I don't care how many times you study the theology. If you're still living in sin, then you truly don't know the Father. You just know of him. You just did little bitty words to learn the Bible. But even if you read the entire Bible, the Bible is a living word. So just because you read the entire Bible does not mean that you stop reading it right now. You need to continue to read the Bible each and every day. You can read the same verse over and over again and watch that the Holy Spirit give you a different revelation every single time if you're filled with the Spirit. I love y'all, man. I hope you guys enjoy y'all day. Uh, it's been your boy, Depan. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.